Munich in the mid-1920s. Pictures of a simple life of virtue, but this is the place where people thirst for lightheartedness. In November of 1926, the city is caught up in the fever of an unusual show. Josephine Baker and her show are introduced. Within less than a year, the black American girl managed to conquer the European audience. Such a show had never been seen on the old continent. Of course, it was a matter of taste, and some watched it with disapproval. The National Socialist journalists tried to turn people against her, in vain. Wicked Paris was hopping with the amusing chaos of the night. Josephine quickly became a real celebrity. The New York beauty shocked and amazed the audience. Every extreme were good. Drugs was madness. Cocaine, heroin, Charleston music, all the madness was there. And Josephine Baker became the embodiment, the personification of those folly, folly, total folly. A girl in a banana skirt becomes a legend very fast. She did this very cute dance, not an exotic dance, but exciting to them. And they were just, and this crazy hairdo that no one was wearing at the time, this short plastered hairdo. So she was just extremely exciting to them. Nightlife prospered in other cities of Europe as well. The Berlin audience, after war and inflation, wanted to revel wildly. Their motto was, anything you like is allowed. And then, sure enough, Josephine Baker conquered Berlin, the great sexual capital of Europe in those days. The city could not resist Baker's campaign. She conquered it easily. She received 40,000 love letters and about 2,000 marriage offers. The audience is crazy about her. Men queued, among them a well-known Berliner, Max Reinhardt. An eyewitness of the happenings, diplomat and rover Graf Kessler wrote in his diary. 1 a.m. in the morning, Reinhardt called me that Miss Baker is here and they're going to do wonderful things. I found Reinhardt among a half dozen naked girls. Miss Baker had nothing on except a small piece of pink lump muslin. She danced in an extremely grotesque way, like Solomon's or Tutankhamun's dancers must have danced, like a foolish child. <laughs> She's dancing in front of Max Reinhardt, naked, having sex with a woman on the floor, in front of everyone. She was an entertainer and an exhibitionist. She was absolutely an exhibitionist. So that's why the stage is perfect for her. Her life became a stage, and the world was her stage. Two and two, it's perfect. But soon, the nationalist socialist moralists appeared, and they dictated what people were allowed to like. There was no place for black beauties in the high quarters. Josephine Baker was ousted from German theaters. Forget the bananas. You're cheating over that. What else can you do? And suddenly, ah, a little gentleman from Germany come, and it's, it's a war over the world. So of course, Josephine, great comedian, she said, well, Paris is the city who adopt me with an open heart. I am willing to give my life for Paris. Of course, standing ovation, you applaud, you cry. Nazis crossed over Paris. For Josephine Baker, this was a sign the time had come to play a new role. She entered the French resistance. It was easy for her. The Germans saw only the exotic old star of the 20s in her. Of course, she played the underground. It's another game for her. She would go when France is occupied by Germany. She would go through the border and through the German soldiers. Who of course, knew Josephine Baker. Half of them had slept with her before the war. So they would sign autograph. She had tours as the courier of French resistance with news hidden in the safest place. 
she was followed by some people from the French underground, and when they crossed the border, oh, Josephine, but it's terrible. We could have been arrested. And simply, she said, but me, I am Josephine Baker. When the war was over, she entertained the winners. The erotic queen of the 20s had a new role, motherly providence of soldiers. Later, Baker could be seen more and more often as a caring angel looking after children. Her dances on stage were fewer and more rarely enjoyable. In the nightlife of Paris, her star was falling. Her banana skirt years were over. In Germany as well, she showed her other motherly face. Hamburg hatte Besuch aus Paris. Josephine Baker in einer charmanten Rolle als Gastgeberin für 100 Waisenkinder und mit einem letzten Auftritt in jener Stadt, wo sie ihre ersten Triumphe gefeiert hat. Successes which had never had a real culmination. Baker was now dreaming about a world where the color of her skin would not matter. She hated to be black all her life. And unfortunately, Josephine's utopic dream of Universal Brotherhood is the worst part of her life. Demoralized by her dream, the Black Venus adopted children from all over the world. She founded a rainbow family. Josephine wanted a Jewish child, so she went to Israel. And Israel said, Miss Baker, we just lost six million children. We don't have a son to give you. She went back to Paris. She went to a foster home, orphanage. She prepared a boy whose name was André. Seven hours later, that boy, two years old, arrived at Le Milan, the chateau, the chateau, the universal Brotherwood village, and suddenly his name was Moses, and she made a Jew out of him. The dream often became a nightmare. The adopting mother aimed too high. Finally, she lost her whole fortune. She became disappointed and embittered but she never broke. Once again, she was back, 50 years after her first show in Paris at the same place. She said, full of light, 18 years old, the Josephine Baker who took Paris by storm. That woman that two minutes ago, I have found hold, tired, tired. A few days later, her heart did not beat anymore. She lived 69 years, and she became one of the symbols of the 20th century. Not least because a picture has become a legend, the girl in the banana skirt. <laughs>